Okay, on the next page, what we have is some more scenarios. And what we want to do is read through those scenarios and figure out which one is the independent and which one is the dependent quantity. Now, where this graph is coming from is at the end of this lesson, so if you were to flip your pages, at the end of this lesson on this page, M1-17, we have eight graphs. You should cut those out, get some tape, and then we're going to figure out where those eight graphs go. Now, I've already taped these in here, pasted these in here. So let's take a look at the daredevil for the first one. Grayson here completes a dive from a cliff 75 feet above the water. It takes him only one and a half seconds to hit the water. And then another half a second to descend 10 feet into the water. So he starts high up and then goes down into the water. So as I've got this labeled right here, okay, this is the answer I'm looking for. The independent quantity is going to be my time in seconds, and the dependent quantity is going to be your y-axis, which is your height above the water. So when time starts, he is way up here at 75 feet, and as he jumps off the cliff and time is going, he's falling down, hits the water, and then he goes underneath the water right there as they show. Okay, So that's what we're going to do is match up these scenarios, identify the independent and dependent, and then match up at the graph. Something fishy. Candace, as you read through that, I'm just going to kind of go through the quick parts of it. Candace is emptying out an aquarium in order to clean it. So she is pumping out the water in order to get an empty tank. The graph that matches this scenario is you're starting off with a lot of water and it's being emptied at a constant rate of 10 gallons per minute. So because that, time as time goes by, that is my independent variable, that is my time in minutes. The, t, the dependent variable, that is the water of, uh, in gallons that is being emptied out. And it's that nice constant line as it empties out. On the smartphone plan, okay, your cousin is going to loan you some money because you cannot afford a phone. But he's going to charge you interest a dollar a week. Sorry, a dollar initially, and then it doubles each week, as it says right here. Now, this one is going to get a curve, as I show right here. As time goes by, that is my independent variable in weeks. And what that times go by, your um, money is doubling. So $1, $2, $4, $8, $16. And that's going to keep curving up like that very quickly. All right. And that is our money, our interest, I should say, which is in terms of dollars. For the slopes. Okay, you're traveling up a ski lift here. You're riding on a ski lift up the mountain. As time goes by, all right, this is going to represent your independent quantity, and this is going to be your dependent quantity. So as time goes by, you're going up the slope. It breaks, as they say in the, pro, in the, in the uh, paragraph. You sit for uh, 10 minutes. You're not moving at all, so you're not moving up anymore. And then it starts back up, and then you start to go back up the mountain, okay? That's why we chose graph G right here. It's magic, okay? It's magic. We've all seen this before, all right? We got a 20-foot piece of rope. The magician cuts it in half. So we get two pieces that are 10 and 10. Then he takes a piece of rope and cuts that in half again. So we go from 10 to 5 and 5. He cuts it in half again. 5 divided by 2, 2 and a half, 2 and a half. He keeps doing that until there's no more pieces left. So what's happening here? He is making cuts. And that length of the rope is getting shorter. It's actually getting cut in half each time. That is the dependent. So we get this curve going down. All right. And uh, that is the graph that represents this scenario. Baton twirling. Okay. In the baton twirling, we toss the baton up into the air. And as time goes by, it says uh, Jill has an opportunity to do two, two twirl, twirls in two seconds. And then the baton comes down and she catches it right there. So graph F is modeling that. The time, as time goes by, the baton goes up in the air. That is why we call it the height, which is in terms of feet. Cold weather. If it's really cold out, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, there is nobody out on these ski slopes, okay? So the temperature is going to influence how many guests are out there. So as the temperature starts to warm up, okay, the number of guests starts to increase. 
we hit the sweet spot in the temperature where it really increases with the number of guests. And eventually, we hit full capacity at 400 guests right here. So graph A is matching this one. And the last one, the jelly bean one, this one is very difficult to explain, even if you're in person. So graph C goes with that. Just jot down these two things, and we'll call it a day right there. I'm going to upload this, and then